Let's compare a hydrostatic transmission to a manual transmission. Tell you the pros and the cons of each. Did a video like this a few years back. Times change, opinions change. I forget things. I'll probably forget things in this video too, but you can help out, leave a comment down below. So what transmission did you choose? Did you have a choice? What do you prefer? Well, if you're not sure, let's help you make up your mind today. All right, we'll start out with the hydro transmission, okay? Most popular transmission there is on the market today for compact tractors. This is a Summit TX25. It is no exception. Comes with a two range, a high and a low hydrostatic transmission. So that means once it's in range, high or low range, all you have to do is push a pedal to go forward and push the other pedal to go backwards. On the Kubota, all right, they have something called a treadle pedal. So it's a rocker pedal, a front and a back. So you push the front of that pedal down to go forward, the back of that pedal to go backwards. Same concept, but most others are a twin touch. So one to go forward, the other to go back. Now, as you start to get a little bit bigger in the compact tractor world, you will introduce a mid range, all right? So you'll have the low, medium, and high. And this is not standardized across the board. So there's exceptions to that, like the John Deere 3E series, for example, it's a three series, but it's still only gonna be a low and a high. There's no medium range in that one. Now tractors like a subcompact, like a John Deere 1025R, a Kubota BX, and similar other brands as well are only gonna be a two range. You start to get to the one step bigger, like the Summit, um, or the, well, the John Deere 2025 is still a two range. This one's a two range. Uh, even the, the John Deere 2032 and 2038R are a two range. And, and that one I've talked about before, when they did that big redesign uh, back in 2018, I think they, they missed the mark when they kept that a two range transmission. They really should have made that a three range to properly compete with the Kubota LX series, like the LX 2610, the LX 3310, well, which are now the LX 2620 and 3320 and anyway that generation there and that size of tractor this is kind of comparable to a 2025r so not really to be expected with the three range but you get to your three series like um your john deere 3039r your kubota l3560 actually even the more basic or plain jane kubota like the l2501 um, are all going to be three range hydro transmissions but let's put a little bit of an asterisk on that too because there are going to be some manual options in some of these series as well so we will circle back to that um, but let's tell you more about the pros and the cons of a hydrostatic transmission and give you a little point of reference i used to sell used tractors lots of them that was like the main thing that i did i would buy uh, trade-ins primarily uh, from dealers around the country you know low hour stuff I, I didn't want things with issues, but then I would turn around and resell them. And I'm telling you right now, folks did not want a manual transmission. Um, I would get them in on rare occasion, primarily uh, just a couple of specific John Deere series, the John Deere 790, John Deere 3005, John Deere 4005, I think it was, um, John Deere 990, really a very limited amount that were hard to find, nice specimens, um, very simple machines, just kind of a classic tractor I, I wish i would have kept one for myself because i had some gems but folks want in the compact world a hydro transmission they're just you can't get anything easier to operate and more efficient to operate and so whether you're just trying to hop on your tractor and go super easy but if you're trying to do work with it okay with the front end loader or the three-point hitch you're not worried about pushing a clutch in and selecting uh, the range selecting the gear making sure you're going forwards or backwards all these different handles and levers and knobs that you have to do and then if you want to change your speed because you're too slow or too fast you gotta make adjustments then too right so i mean all you're doing is controlling your throttle making those engine rpms go up or down to where you need them to be and then just pushing that pedal really hard or just a little bit to speed up or slow down you know and something that um i'm sure i didn't talk about years ago when i made that earlier video is i think it might be safer i think a hydro transmission might be safer than a gear drive and and maybe I'm not thinking about this completely, but with a hydro transmission, again, you push a pedal down to go, right? So forwards or backwards. So if you take your foot off of the pedal, it, it just stops, right? You're not going anywhere, it's, it's done. Not, if you're on a hill, you take your foot off, the tractor could still keep rolling down the hill, but it's gonna, at least gonna slow down a bit. Um, whereas a gear drive, you don't have your foot on a pedal. It's in gear and it's just going, right? So if something happens to the operator, your foot's gonna come off the, the hydro pedal, right? And you're just gonna kind of sit there. On a gear drive, you're just gonna keep going to whatever until you stop, right? So, so there's something in your way that makes you stop. Anyway, food for thought there. That's maybe looking at it a little bit 
morbidly or something, I don't know, but uh, it's a good safety factor to think about too. Okay, let's talk about the downsides. It's not all roses, okay? Hydro transmissions are more expensive, all right? So those series that we'll touch on a little bit here that you have the option to get a manual or a hydraulic, you're gonna see there's a price difference and it could range depending on the brand and the series and everything else, but it could be two, three grand uh, to go from that manual to that hydro. So you're paying for that premium. It's just a more complex, complicated system. Um, and so therefore it costs more. Additionally, we found out running a batwing mower on our large compact. And this is, um, I don't want to put this all on the hydro transmission, but it just kind of brought to light the subject more, I think, is that if you're running for a long time, you know, full throttle, wide open, running that PTO on a hot day, like mowing a field like we were doing, it's very likely that it's going to run a lot hotter, okay? Those hydro transmissions, they just run hotter and you could potentially overheat or have to, you know, stop and let it cool down for a bit before you keep on going. Not saying that's for sure always gonna happen to you, but it is gonna be a lot more likely. Um, you know, on those hot days, you gotta watch your, your temperature needle a bit more to see where it's at compared to a gear drive that just generally runs cooler. Now, speaking of PTO horsepower, you're gonna have some robbed from that hydro transmission, all right? The way that they're designed and that they operate is that it kind of, everything works together, right? And so those hydro transmissions steal some horsepower to do what they do, to get the tractor to move along. And so that means there's gonna be less horsepower coming out of that PTO shaft to use whatever tool you're pulling behind, if it's a mower or um, a tiller or anything else back there. And you're not gonna have that same issue with a gear drive. It's just a simpler transmission style on there. And so you are gonna be able to put more PTO horsepower to the ground, so to speak. And then cameraman Chris, my brother brought up a good one as well. Not every hydrostatic model is gonna have cruise control as a feature on it, okay? And so if you are doing long runs, like mowing a big field, okay? Or tilling a big field or whatever you're doing, just big long projects and you don't have cruise control, well, with a hydro transmission, you're gonna to have to have your pedal down or your foot on your pedal the whole time and at a constant rate or whatever else. And so it's the same thing if you're driving down the highway, right? If you're, if you're going for a long distance, you're just throwing on cruise control and letting us do its thing versus having to sit there and hold down the pedal the whole time. That gets tiring pretty quick. We're proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. Okay, so let's talk about the world of manual transmissions and you are gonna have several at least several different types of transmissions and oh, just popped up. Chris, if you can find that one super crazy, remember that one gear drive transmission that's like you go up, down, left, right, A, B, select, start? So people say they don't understand this thing and I don't really get it. You got three, five, seven, six, eight. You got one, three, three reverse, two, five, five reverse, four, seven, and seven reverse if you're lucky. Six, eight. I, I can't even run that one. I don't even want to try. But uh, crazy video out there. If we can find that, we'll include that too. But a um, lot of different types. Got some sandhill cranes up there. Get some video of that there, Chris. One's breaking off. What is this, Top Gun? Five of them. Hey there, buddies. Boy, they don't really know how to fly straight. Okay, so manual transmissions. You have a very simple transmission where you have to come to a standstill, push in a clutch with your foot, then change your gear, okay? Then you have a little bit more advanced type of manual transmission where you push in a clutch on the fly. So if you're moving and you wanna change speeds, you can just push in that clutch like a car and then change your gear. Then you have a even more advanced one where you can do all that kind of stuff, but then have a little slap handle like a, a shuttle shift and you can reverse direction or a power reverser, they might call it, where it seems crazy. You're going forward and like into a loader pile, scooping up a bucket of dirt or something. And you're like, time to go backwards. And you're going forward. You slap that handle the opposite direction and the tractor, the transmission does its thing and safely reverses it, even though you're going in motion forward. It's, it's crazy. I didn't trust it the first few times I did it 
but it works. And on the really nice ones, um, there's gonna be an option at least because I've seen this on some John Deere 4 Series that had a power reverser where there's a little dial, I think it was, that you can actually control the speed that it reverses, okay? So if you don't want it to like totally jerk you out of your seat when you go forward to backwards, you can adjust that dial so that it slowly kind of slows to a stop forward and then picks up and goes backwards. So you have that capability, not standard on all of them, but I know it's at least an option. And then you're gonna have the most advanced version that I've seen yet, which is what's found on this Kubota M4, where you don't have to push in a clutch period. Uh, on the fly, you can change with that slap handle forwards and backwards. And on the gear select, you can just push a little button in that's on the handle that you change gears with. You just push that button in and it electronically clutches. And then you can change your gears on the fly going forwards or backwards. It's super awesome. Um, I use it more and more and it took a little bit of getting used to and, and again, I think trusting it, um, but it works great. It's really awesome. I. Uh, I don't think this one, I haven't found any way, has that dial to kind of adjust the forward and backwards, change of direction or change of speed. Um, I haven't found it really neat it though, and the more I use this tractor, I've had it a year and a half now, something like that, the more I really like it. Now, one big thing, doesn't matter if it's hydro or manual transmission, gear drive transmission, is if you're going to change the range, the low, the medium, the high range, you need to do that at a standstill. Do not do that on the fly or you're gonna cause some problems that are not gonna be covered under any kind of warranty. Now, of course, a lot of the pros of a gear drive transmission are gonna be the cons that we talked about of a hydro transmission. So they're gonna run cooler typically. They're gonna put more PTO horsepower out compared to a hydro. They're gonna be cheaper to buy up front. And some folks, it's probably true, it's gonna be cheaper to maintain down the road. If you had to rebuild a hydro transmission, that's likely gonna cost a lot more than it is to rebuild a manual or a gear drive transmission. I wanna say though that for modern compact tractors and most folks that are buying these now, you're never gonna to get to that point, okay? I mean, folks are putting 100 hours or less a year on these tractors and sell them off after sometimes five years, 10 years, 20 years, whatever it is, even if you have 2,000 hours on here, that's typically not gonna be when you have to replace or rebuild a transmission on a hydro machine. And so if you are doing those big fields, right? Tilling, mowing, dissing, whatever it is, even snow plowing, snow blowing along driveway, you kind of have built-in cruise control with a gear drive. Because again, coming back to that safety factor, when you take your foot off the pedal on a hydro, you, you come to a standstill, well, that's kind of cruise control on, on a gear drive because you put it in gear and it just goes. So you don't have to worry about pushing down a pedal and holding it down. You just kind of sit there and drink a cup of coffee or whatever you want to do while it's doing its thing. So that's, a, that's kind of a trade-off, right? So you need to have more operator awareness. Um, I do like it a lot. I, I love just putting it in gear and, and knowing I'm good to go the same speed. Uh, you do tend to watch your RPM, your gauge cluster a bit more because you'll adjust your speed still. If I'm mowing and I get to a, you know, not every field's consistent, and if I'm mowing and it gets really thick, you can, you can see the engine, you can hear the engine start to bog down. Now, in those kinds of cases, I may downshift because I wanna keep my RPMs up on my PTO to keep my blade spinning on my mower, for example, right? You don't wanna lose that, otherwise you're losing effectiveness, you're losing cut quality, that kind of thing. So, you still have to be aware as an operator, and it doesn't mean it's just gonna plow through everything, you still gotta kinda be selective on what you're doing. Now, while a hydro transmission, you do have the hand throttle there to control the engine RPMs, on a manual, it is nice because you're gonna have not just a, a hand throttle control, but you're gonna have a foot throttle control as well. And so if you are trying to just really kind of fine tune how fast you're going and you're not, you don't have the PTO on, you're just kinda moving along or doing whatever, you can keep the RPMs down lower, like maybe put that hand throttle to the mid-level, and then if you really need to get a little bump in RPMs for a certain uh, momentary period of time, you can push down a foot throttle and it'll rev up the engine RPMs, you'll go faster, you'll have more hydraulic flow. Um, so if you need to, you know, if you're standing still and you need to lift a, a bucket higher and you do it quickly, you can just push down that foot throttle, the hydraulic response is gonna increase and you can lift it up a lot quicker. All right, so of course, they come with a few cons too, right? And so. If you're shifting, <laughs> you have to shift a lot, okay? And that can be very cumbersome and very annoying. And uh, especially for loader work, I'm still not, I still don't like doing loader work all the time with this, but I, I've gotten a lot better with it. I, I, um, it's becoming a lot more tolerable and I probably do the most pallet fork work, loading and unloading things and moving things around. And I'm 
I'm getting pretty good at it. It's it's becoming not a hindrance, you know, like I'm, oh, I gotta go get on that big Kubota because it's got a lot of lift capacity and move things around. Now it's just fine, okay? Um, but it does come with a lot steeper learning curve because of every lever and knob that you have to deal with. Now also it's gonna hurt you in resale value. And this is where I wanna kinda paint, um, well, do a little bit more explaining, all right? Because let's get back to the, the compact tractor world and differentiate that from the utility world, all right? Utility tractors don't come in hydrostatic transmissions. You can only get them with some sort of a manual transmission. Certain models will have multiple versions of those manual transmissions, which you can pay a bit of a premium for or get a bit of a discount, I guess, if you wanna go with a more simple one. Now, there are gonna be some models in the compact tractor world where you have a choice as well, and that's not all of them. I like to use the Kubota Standard L Series as a good example because you can get a manual transmission or a hydro transmission in that series for sure. But I do think that you're gonna be hurt on resale value, not just because it's, it's cheaper brand new, but because there's gonna be a lot smaller market of folks that want a gear drive and a compact tractor. Just the market says, get a hydro transmission in the compact tractor world. And so you could use that as a bargaining chip if you really want a manual um, and you're looking for a compact, maybe, you know, maybe it's gonna to work to your advantage. But if you're selling one, that's gonna work as a disadvantage and you're likely gonna have a harder time selling that because there's gonna be smaller demand for it overall. And now you will see the Kubota Grand L series, uh, the John Deere 4R series, John Deere 3R series too, I do believe, are gonna have multiple transmissions options as well, like a power reverser with that slap handle on there or the regular hydro transmission too. So again, you're gonna have select choices in the, in the compact world with either transmission. Utility world, for sure, it's only manual or gear drive transmissions, no hydro available. So folks, there you go, okay, hopefully, that makes sense, all right? I mean, the pros and the cons to each, sometimes you're gonna have a choice, sometimes you're not, but maybe you're on the fence between a compact or a utility tractor and the type of transmission makes a big difference for you. And that sends you in one direction or another, or maybe you're just looking at a, at a compact tractor, but you like the old school, you grew up on some farm tractors, you just want the simple gear drive, and that whittles down the available models that are gonna be available to you. Or who knows, maybe you just need to know how a, a transmission works on a tractor because you had no idea and didn't know if they operated like cars or like a skid steer or something else. So, gives you some insight either way. I'm sure I missed some pros and some cons. So, if you have something else to add, this channel is about helping other people out in the tractor world. A lot of folks that are new to the tractor world and so just Give your opinion, give your advice, give your input on maybe what pointed you in one direction or another, the strengths and the weaknesses, all that kind of stuff really helps. I try to showcase all sorts of tractors on this channel. We've shown all sorts of John Deere's and Kubota's, trying out the Summit now too, putting it through its paces, having a lot of fun. And so while we don't sell tractors, we certainly can help you out with tractor attachments. We sell all sorts of them for the front end loaders and the three point hitch. So if you're looking for a tractor tool, I'm sure we can help you out. Prices include free shipping, rewards, and financing too. Check it out at goodworkstractors.com. So if you're looking for a new tractor tool, well, guess what? We have over 600 other videos out there, so check those out. You can likely see some tools in action and see if they're the right fit for you. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.